Hello everyone, welcome to my next sec channel. I'm Johnny. Previously in my channel, I have made a couple of videos about how to create a cloud desktop container in your Linux environment. I made one such as uh, Neko, also VNC, or using no VNC, or XRTP server installed in your Linux environment, etc. etc. You can find more from my channels. But recently I found this one, Kazan Workspaces, much more interesting than others. It's not only deliver a full functional desktop experience using your browsers, but also provide enterprise level security and functionality to use. More important, it also has a community version which we can free to use. I also found the installation steps are very simple and straightforward to follow. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick review chasm. This remote catalyzed streaming platform and also I'm going to show you how we can quickly and easily install Chasm into your Linux system, either on plan or either in the cloud. Let's start it. First, let's quickly go through the solutions and features. Here are some typical solutions and use cases for cats and workspaces. It can be used for browser isolation, remote workspaces, classroom and training, legacy app isolation, machine learning, AI development. You can go through those uh, solutions by yourself. But the one thing I really like is try it now. This feature can give you three minutes to launch a container to show you their product, how it looks like in your browser. There are three typical containers to launch for a demo purpose, desktop, web isolation, application workspace. I really like desktop workspaces Let's give it a try, launch it. So first thing, you get three minutes. There's uh, some popular applications already inside of this container. By the way, the container can be customized. There are lots of free container has been created on Docker Hub, which you can download to use. This is one of them, they call it the Kazan desktop. We can launch Google Chrome, and you can also launch such as Teams, Zoom, Slack, quite a few things you can launch from there. You also can, can go to some website. There are filtering built-in security features. So not all websites gonna be visited from here. Only certain website, for example, you won't be able to go to my website because it's been denied. The traffic has been restricted for the demo network. But it's, it's working great. And audio also working. Other than that, you can hear the background, the audio is coming out. It's working very beautiful. By the way, it supports a clipboard, it supports downloading, and it's in saved on download folder, it can be downloaded. You can share your instance with other group and teammates as well. At the end, you also can delete, destroy this Kazan desktop if you don't want to use it anymore. This is one 
desktop workspace. Another one for web isolation is similar, but the only thing is they give you a browser to launch either Chrome or either Firefox based on your template. For this, they give you Chrome. But there's uh, another image for Firefox. So there's some websites which we can open directly. Hmm. Again, it's not all of websites accessible from demo instance. On the left panel, you can see even the microphone supported audio supported performance for this desktop is almost similar like your local I'd say native experience that made me very interesting on this product I want to give it a try and I want to install it in my Linux environment to, to see how the performance looks like the workspace working experience is similar like a VDI but basically it's a Linux VDI not a Windows good thing is it's completely free to use I had enough talks so let's start to install it I'm gonna use Microsoft Azure to create a virtual machine from resources this download page which you can download the Kazan workspace right now the version is 1.9.0 there's a single server installation guide which shows you everything you need to know of course the system requirement is something you want to check so Ubuntu Debian CentOS were all well supported there's no ARM based support for this software that's the one PT if they can have ARM architecture to be supported that would be great wonderful the minimum requirement is 2 CPU 4 gig RAM and 50 gig SSD Docker and the Docker Compose version but the loads will be minimum requirement so we're gonna create that minimum requirement VM to test this installation and this software we're gonna use Ubuntu 20.04 LTS generation 1 version the size downgraded to the standard which two virtual CPU 4 gig of memory the minimum version we can allow HTTP HTTPS so the disk right now we are using premium SSD default is 30 gig which is enough I already tested you don't have to use 50 gig storage in this case 30 gig is more than enough for testing other than that all other settings are default we're gonna allow HTTP as HTTP and SSH let's create it after waited one or two minutes the deployment completed you can go to resources to take a quick look most important you want to verify your disk size which is 30 gigabyte enough again so here says 50 gigabyte I tested 30 gigabyte it's good for the production definitely you need more they were gonna download it all template docker for you to use so that's why they need that much so I'm using my favorite SSH client log into this VPS we just created 
switch to super user mode. First thing always get the system updated. It's gonna take a couple minutes at the most. So I'll come back once it's done. Update has been completed. If you look at the installation guide, we're going to create a swap partition. What we can do, we can just directly copy whole things and paste in there. You can quickly verify there's a one gig swap size file has been created to make it permanent. So I from a reboot, one more command to paste. From the installation guide, we have been told we need to download the latest release, which we can find out from this link. We're going to put it into the temp folder. Download this latest release. Now we can just directly copy next two command. We're going to extract the file and then run install the sh file. Accept the license. Now it's going to take um, probably 20 minutes to install all necessary Docker, Docker Compose components, download all needed template Docker container. You can tell the Docker CE has been installing and the Docker Compose, they will install all necessary components for you. What do you need to do? Just wait until that finish. So you will get login credentials for all components, dockers, you will need to log in. Right now it pull in the DB docker. So from here I will stop the video recording and I will come back once this is completed. The installation just completed. It took about 12-13 minutes. Let's um Login credentials generated. You will need to copy those out. It will be used for your login. So the 30 gig disk has been used uh, almost half. There's uh, quite a few Docker has been downloaded, which consume large space for your um, Linux environment. So now everything looks okay and uh, we can tell there are six, seven dockers has been started. So let's open the browser and take a look. So if you access HTTPS page, you will get this warning for your certificate because it's still using self-signed certificate to access this website. Right now, we just need to log in using a credential generated from the installation script. You can directly copy username, password. All looks beautiful. We are on at the main page on the left panel you will see all menus you can use you can see the sessions you can create the users that's the default user created by your installation script there's a images downloaded here which was taking very long time to download all of them save the local you can launch them directly from your workspace page.
totally there are twenty one containers download it we can see desktop application and the browser VLC Virtual Studio Code Teams Terminal Signal all those templates you can launch from your workspace you can set up policy for the group which application you want to launch also you can set it up for your user let's uh, start with uh, Ubuntu Bionic version launch session so you got the uh, tips welcome to workspaces got it right away you get uh, this remote desktop launching and uh, you can launch Google Chrome Since this is my Docker, I should be able to access the Internet without problem. I can access my web page. One thing I always curious about, uh, which is the performance. At this moment, the load is still low, not that high. CPU around 40%. Memory may have been a little bit tight as website is not being used much at this moment. We have 983 Mac free. It's still okay. The minimum system requirement works. I want to test it uh, YouTube. Let's give this video a try. Immediately we hear the voice coming out. And the microphone can be enabled. We can download the files you saved on this virtual desktop. I can maximize the screen. It's uh, running at a 1080p. So from this testing, I can tell the virtual desktop is running well and it meets my expectations. I'm happy with it. You can download those container template and customize for yourself to use. You can sign out or deleting this session. As I mentioned before, this can be created for multiple users to use. The free version has a limitation for five concurrent sessions, which means at most five people can use it at the same time. And even for a small company, small business company, it's already also okay. So if you are interested on this product, follow my video, give it a try, install in your own virtual environment, give more memory. I would suggest to give more than 8 gig RAM, also maybe 100 gig disk size, at least 4 virtual CPU. In that case, supporting five concurrent users to use Kazan workspaces going to be fine and run much more smooth than minimum system requirement. Hope you enjoyed my video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel if you still haven't. Give me a thumb up if you like this video.